Good morning, friends. <clears throat> A little morning reflection on Psalm 22. This third section of Psalm 22 talks about the trouble that David faces. And as we realize in the Psalm, it's symbolic for the trouble that all of us face. And now, especially this week, as we reflect on Jesus' death and resurrection, we see that literally in the Psalm, it's the trouble that Jesus faces. So this morning I'd like to read, <clears throat> I'll start where I picked up, left off yesterday with verse 11 of Psalm 22 and read through verse 21. This is where we ended yesterday. Do not be, <clears throat> do not be far from me for trouble is near and there is no one to help. Many bulls surround me, strong bulls of Bashan encircle me. Roaring lions tear it that tear their prey, open their mouths wide against me. I am poured out like water, and all my bones are out of joint. My heart has turned to wax, it is melted within me. My mouth is dried up like a potsherd, my tongue sticks to the roof of my mouth. You lay me down in the dust of death. Dogs surround me, a pack of villains encircles me. They pierce my hands and my feet. All my bones are on display. People stare and gloat over me. They divide my clothes among them and cast lots for my garment. But you, Lord, do not be far from me. You are my strength. Come quickly to help me. Deliver me from the sword, my precious life from the, life of the, from the power of the dogs. Rescue me from the mouth of the lions. Save me from the wild oxen. This is a section where David gets a little bit more specific about his troubles. And he paints the picture in, in this really vivid way. He t first talks about uh, bulls and roaring lions surrounding him. And as we re read this text, we realize there's, there's nothing literally that we can attach this psalm to in David's life. Uh, instead, he's giving a, a pattern of pain, one that, uh, one that we can all find ourselves in. When he talks about bulls and oxen, or uh, bulls and lions, those are symbols of power in the Bible, right? The powers are against David, whatever those powers may be. And in the face of that, he's, he's poured out like water in fear. His heart melts like wax. <clears throat> he's laid down in the dust of death. And then in the next section, there's a, a new set of evil that comes toward him. It's a, it's a pack of dogs and evildoers. And so here we have the sense of um, prey being hunted down by, by the mighty. And so that, that sense of helplessness, of, of being a victim of what's going on. And this becomes then uh, the, the prayer book for all of God's people, where we can find ourselves not necessarily in a specific situation that David was in, but rather we can, we can bring ourselves in because we, we've all faced those powers that were against us or, or ways that we felt that uh, we felt like the, the hunted prey. I remember, I think of times in my life where, where I felt that this Psalm was the, the most um, vivid for me uh, when we were going through times of infertility and were completely helpless uh, family troubles. I faced as a child, uh, the, the death uh, and suffering of, a ninth grade student of mine who had a form of cancer that ravaged young people, but it was very rare. Um, I think of uh, the 2008 housing crash when I was in seminary, where for a period of like 16 months, uh, we were struggling to try to unload a house and get out from under debt. And even after that long period when we did get out of debt, or when we did get rid of the house, that was just now the beginning of years of digging out of debt. And so times that really racked us up where felt like the, the fifth food group was Tums in our lives. Uh, that time of anxiety and fear of helplessness. And of course, uh, 
what we see in this too, I, you heard as I was reading, this is figurative, figuratively what happens to so many of us, but literally what happened to Christ. Yesterday, there was uh, I read the passage in verse 7. All who see me mock me. They hurl insults, shaking their heads. He trusts the Lord, they say. Let the Lord deliver him. Let him deliver him, since he delights in him. And when we read about Jesus' crucifixion in Matthew 27, that phrase comes up literally. Or today, uh, they pierce my hands and my feet. Whose feet and hands got literally pierced? It's a figurative pain, except for Christ. His hands were literally, and hands and feet were literally pierced for us. All my bones are on display. People gloat, stare and gloat over me. That's the way Luke records the situation uh, of Jesus on the cross in Luke 23. They divide, they divide my clothes among them and cast lots for my garments. That's exactly what John says happens in John 19 when Jesus is on the cross. And so the psalm gives us a framework to express our own pain and our own fear and our own anxiety. And yet we see that, that Jesus literally faced all of those things. So we know that we have a Savior who understands the, the depth of pain and of rejection and yet overcame them on our behalf. His victory becomes our victory. But I would encourage you now if, for example, this, uh, this pandemic is bringing up situations that are bigger than what we can handle in our own strength. In reality, all of evil and brokenness is something that's bigger than we can handle in our own strength. But times like these help us to see in very literal, real ways how, how weak we are in the face of it. And yet we know that in that, Jesus identifies with us. He, is, he, he was fully human like us and went through the whole experience. And so we can lay these things out to God and Jesus, our mediator, our great high priest, hears our prayers and he says, I know, I know, I, I get you, I hear you, I, I feel that. But even with all these pains, uh, what began with, do not be far from me, the psalmist says, because trouble is near. The, the realness that we feel sometimes is trouble and the hope that we have in God as we saw in the beginning of the psalm, can feel far and silent. But listen to, uh, listen to the prayer then, the, the cry for help that comes out of this pain. But you, Lord, do not be far from me. You are my strength. Come quickly to help me. Deliver me from the sword, my precious life from the power of the dogs. Rescue me from the mouth of the lions. Save me from the horns of the wild oxen. And so let that be our prayer, uh, whatever it is that we're facing right now, whatever anxieties that we're having, especially in the time of pandemic, that we would put them before God, that we would know that um, however it may feel right now, God is nearer than any trouble. God is stronger than any foe. Uh, Christ is identifying with us, and he is the one who has won the victory already. And so let's not hold back in our prayers, but let's pour out our hearts to God in faith and in trust that even when we don't sense exactly what he's doing, he is near and his love surrounds us. So as always, stay safe, stay healthy, stay connected. Grace and peace be yours in abundance. And I will see you tomorrow as we reflect on uh, some of that. We get into the closing praises of the psalm.